Hey everybody, boys, that's a big for us. Welcome to the weekly technicals for the major for Euro dollar, dollar yen, pound dollar for April 17th to April 21, 2017. We're coming off the very, very quiet Easter week recess. We still have, I guess, Monday is going to be Easter holiday in a lot of Anglo Saxon countries. Uh, but the big theme as we come into the week is I think the dollar is really under threat. The whole thesis of strong US growth really took a big, big tumble on Friday when U.S. Um, retail sales data and CPI data came in woefully weak. Uh, we'll take a look at it as a matter of fact, actually. It's worth taking a look at it. Look at the, uh, look at the data set today. Um, we missed on the CPI horribly, on the core CPI badly, and retail sales came in much weaker than everybody expected. None of this looks really good. It basically suggests that organically the U.S. economy simply doesn't have the power to uh, generate enough growth for the dollar to really begin to rally sustainably. That's why yields have been so low. That's why the dollar has been dropping. Um, and uh, Friday's data certainly did not help. Next week or this week, we really don't have much on the calendar. It's incredibly quiet. Building permits, crude inventory, really second tier data all the way. And in fact, the most interesting event risk is probably going to be Thursday's um, speech by Treasury Secretary Mnuchin because really the big big question for the dollar going forward now is will the political will in Washington create enough of a stimulus for the US economy to pick up slack at this point the market uh, organically as I said basically has run out of gas there is nothing economically to, to believe that the dollar uh, deserves a strong yield at this point as a matter of fact Neil Kashkarian who is one of the more skeptical Fed uh, Fed governors has been arguing strongly that there is no need for further rate hikes his view has been completely out of uh, convention with the rest of the federal uh, board, but he seems to have been absolutely correct. Uh, with, low in, uh, with low CPI data, very tepid consumer demand, um, two rate hikes uh, for the rest of the year would be the maximum level uh, at this point, which really puts the dollar under a tremendous amount of threat. Overlying all of this, by the way, is, of course, the whole geopolitical threat of North Korea, which is going to be a very, very big uncertain all the way through the week. We'll have to see exactly how things shape up um, in the Korean Peninsula. Where, I think it's next week that it's the uh, birthday of the uh, founder of the North Korean Republic and therefore a time when they love to blow up nuclear weapons or test their nuclear weapons underground. Um, it'll be interesting to see how much of a response and what kind of response the U.S. is going to present to North Korea. There is quite a lot of tension built up right at this point, although nobody really thinks it's going to be a full-on confrontation, but of course, with the Trump administration and, and uh, uh, the North Korean administration, anything is possible, and that's why uh, the risk aversion flows on dollar yen could be could be vicious. Um, the decline that we saw last week could just be the beginning. So, as we look at the levels, uh, the levels have really radically changed um, um, on the dollar yen. Everything else is kind of more or less the same. Euro is still 105, 107. Dollar yen has now dropped with 110 being resistance, not support. And now 108 becomes the nearest support for the pair. And the pound is just kind of mildly inched up uh, from 23s to the 24, 26 uh, levels. Let's take a look at the uh, charts here, starting with the euro. The euro has been able to survive this, this first foray into the 105.50 and has held support. But the story with the euro really is going to be the, the French election. The first round of French election comes in on Sunday, next Sunday. And that's going to be a very big test. The, the whole week, the big geopolitical story in Europe will be the polling and whether Macron is able to preserve his 25% lead or 25% uh, gain amongst the population, which will give him essentially the second round runoff. The big threat here is that there is a late surge by the left-wing candidate Mélenchon who could potentially, who could potentially, let's say, uh, take away the lead away from Macron. And it could, you could, then you would have the polar opposites of Le Pen and Mélenchon both of whom, by the way, are pretty anti-euro and therefore put a massive threat uh, onto the currency. That's a surprise surprise scenario, but not out of the question given the fact of how dynamic and fluid the uh, election has become. So watching that very, very carefully. For now, the 105.50 is the key support. That breaks to the downside. Euro feels a lot more pressure and could see 104 as the week progresses. Uh, but as long as that level holds, we still, have, we still have a little bit more of an upside potential here towards the 107 level uh, as the week goes by. Nothing on the calendar here to make us move one way or the other. Dalai Yana, of course, really got crumb crushed 
the Lotus 110 level, hasn't been able to even recover towards the, uh, uh, the 109, much less the 110s at this point. 108.50 is the first level of support here into the Monday trade, and then we're going to be watching the 108. 108 is really going to be the Maginot line. Um, if that crumbles lower, dollar-yen could really just unwind very, very ugly all the way out to the 105s with, within a blink of an eye. So you need to be very careful and very wary of the combination of geopolitical risk and the very slow U.S. growth that could just complete turn uh, sentiment around uh, this whole week. This is one of the, this could be one of those explosive weeks to the downside that nobody really expects. So beware. The trade so far is sell the rallies in dollar yen, um, unless uh, some miraculous thawing of, of, of relations happens. I am not a um, um, a buyer of dollar yen given everything that's ha transpired at the end of this week. And then pound dollar is. Um, just basically marking time. We do have the Carney speech. There really is not much on the calendar until Friday's UK retail sales. UK retail sales uh, could be a mild negative impact if, if the consumer remains relatively weak. But cable is trading as much on anti-dollar flow as anything else. Very, very low volatility trade. It's really a sort of a you know, 50, 60 uh, point volatility trade every single day. There is nothing really, I think, on the UK gap yeah, besides Carney speaking, and he's unlikely to say anything but more dovish commentary. Um, he's essentially going to pretty much, I think, repeat the story of we're going to ignore inflation because we think the economy uh, uh, requires more accommodation, blah, 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 so on and so forth. None of that should be, you know, uh, greatly supportive to the pound. Um, data last week came out mildly okay, but um, at this point, real wages in UK are still being completely eroded by inflation. Um, and uh, the big tell will be on Friday to see with the retail sales. The retail sales are projected to be negative. If they're considerably negative, if they're one percent negative, should take should be a big hit to the pound, and that's going to be the big event risk that we're going to be watching. For now, this 26 seems to be a relatively decent resist point. Um, of course, depending on just how strong the dollar trades as the week goes by. So really, the big stories this week is um, dollar yen as the primary driver here with euro. Um, and the French election as a secondary driver. Those are going to be the big stories we'll be watching in the majors. Wish you guys the best of luck, the best of trading. Boris Lossberg, over and out.